everyone. Today I want to talk to you about accountability in the workplace. Are you leading a group of nobles? I recently had this conversation with a client and I found it actually very fascinating. It became quite funny between the two of us as we unraveled what was really going on. My client has been working really hard at installing a high level of accountability into the culture at the workplace, which I deal with with a lot of my clients. And it's gotten to a place where people are more than willing to admit they're wrong. Now that says a lot about where the culture has come from because for the most part, a lot of people's egos get in the way and they're simply unwilling to admit wrong and instead go toward defensiveness or blame and it really is very toxic and it doesn't go anywhere. So that's great step one. You've got people willing to admit wrong and we're moving forward from there. Here's what ends up happening. Imagine around a boardroom table you have a group of executives and you are debriefing a particular situation or strategy that your corporation is working on. And someone is saying, well, this was what I was supposed to do, but I didn't get that done. Well, great, that's great. But you have a bunch of people saying, oh, that was my bad, I did that, I'm sorry but nothing actually ever becomes of that. And what happens is it's like a group of nobles. Can you imagine with the purple capes on going, oh, my mistake, I'm so sorry, but really nobody is ever doing anything about it. So here is step two and three of accountability in the workplace. Step two is impact. So what I'm having this leader do is stop a meeting when we get sort of the noble, oh, my bad, that was my mistake, I didn't follow through, stop the meeting right there, time out. Okay, everyone else, what was the impact of Joe not keeping their word? Who did that impact and how? It's only that as the group as a whole begins to hear what was the impact when people don't follow through and don't keep their word, that behaviors actually start to change and they start to see the domino effect and how that actually relates directly to the bottom line. That's when behavior changes. And restitution, what are they going to do about that such that it doesn't happen again or that they at least alleviate the particular stress on that one situation. This is a huge step in really integrating a high level of accountability into your corporation and into your family. And it's a lot about conversation and it does require the safety and the time and the trust in order to have those. Leave me a comment on my blog. I would love to hear about how accountability works in your family or your workplace. Is there simply the admitting of wrong or do you talk about impact and restitution? What kind of conversations do you find actually increase accountability and which ones completely annihilate it? Installing accountability in your culture is possible. Follow those three steps, you can do it.